Welcome to the Branson Woodwind Shop. This video is going to be about how to remove and install flute pads. There are three different systems for holding the pad onto the key. This one is probably the most common. It's the screw with the washer. And then this one, it is a plastic pad holder and it snaps onto the spud which is soldered onto the key. And then the other one is for open hole flutes. And when there's an open hole, they need to have a different system. So there's a grommet that holds the pad on. And for this system, you take the screw out and then the washer comes out too. Then you can pull out the pad. And often underneath the pads, you'll find shims, the paper shims. And what these do is they make sure that the pad comes up the right height. For this system, you take the same screwdriver and carefully pry up the pad holder and that usually comes out without too much difficulty. Usually you can use these, but sometimes they crack and you will need to replace it with a new one. This pad did not have a shim. The pad was the right height without a shim, so they did not need to put one in. The other system is the open hole pad system. And you take the same screwdriver and you carefully pry up the grommet and you go around the pad until it comes off. Be careful when prying up these grommets because they can bend and you can replace them but it's easier to use the one that's already there. And if you pull the pad out you can see what this attaches to. And there's the grommet and there's a chimney right there and you push that onto there and it holds on to the grommet. Here's my set of foot pads. Usually I use the yellow treated pads with the double bladder skin. Yellow treated pads seem to hold up a little bit better than the white ones, but if I'm replacing one pad on a foot with the white pads, I will replace it with a white pad so that it matches. The pad sizes I use the most are the 11.5 for the trill keys and the high C key. And it looks like I'm running low on those. I'll have to order some of those soon. And then the 17.5, 18, and 18.5 are the most common for the rest of the keys on the body of the flute. And sometimes on the foot joint they have larger keys and they're usually 19 or 19.5. Those are the ones I use the most, but different manufacturers use different sizes for their keys. To get the right size pad, you put one in there, and if it falls out when you turn it upside down, that one is too small. So go to the next size up. And this one, it doesn't come out. It seems to be good. It should fit in there tightly, but not so tight that it causes the skin to warp. The next thing to do is make sure that the pad comes out of the key cup the right height. And the way to do that is put the pad in and hold it down with your finger and that simulates the pad holder holding it down. The pad should not be level with the cup. It should stick out about 14 thousandths or about 0.35 millimeters. Get an idea of how much that is. It's about one or two 3x5 cards and it should stick out about that much out of the cup. Pad height is good, so I do not need a shim. The pad holder is ready to go on. There is a pliers for pressing in the pad holders, and it works like this. And you really do not need one of these, though. If you do, if you do not have one, you can take a dowel and just press it in like that. Or, if you need to, you can tap it in lightly with a mallet. When you're using the plastic pad holders, check to see if the pad is in there firmly. Just take your fingernail and see if you can pry it up without too much effort. And if it does not come up, it's good. If it does come up easily, then you need to replace the pad holder. This pad is the correct size. It is 17.5 millimeters, but it is not the right height. So I'm going to put some shims in there so that the pad sticks out of the pad cup enough. Here's my set of flute pad shims, and these are the 17 millimeter shims, so I'm going to use those. And this is 12 thousandths of an inch thick, so I'll try that first. And I'll take a look. It looks like it sticks out a little bit too far, so I'm going to shrink that just a little bit. I'll take out the 12 thousandths, and this is a 6 thousandths. And you can stack these, so I'm stack, going to stack a 6 and a 3 together to get 9 thousandths. And I'll put the pad in, and that looks good. So I'm going to use that. Put the screw inside the washer, 
and screw that on. For the open hole key, you find the pad that is the right diameter, and it will not fit in though because the hole on the key is bigger than the hole on the pad. There's a tool that will cut the pad to fit the key. This is an open hole pad punch. Take the pad, put it into the pad cutter, and then give this a couple good hits. And another one. There we go. Then you have a pad that will fit into an open hole flute key. Put it in the grommet and give it a couple light taps with a mallet. And that should be good. You're almost done. The three pads that were replaced have ripples on the skin and they need to be ironed out. Take a little water and put it on your finger and put it on the pads that need to be ironed out. Then you take a pad leveling tool, and I have one that a hole has been cut out of. And the reason for the hole is because you can iron the pad and avoid the pad holders when you're ironing them. And then you take the torch and heat up the pad leveling tool. You don't want to get it too hot, but you want it to be hot enough to cause the water to sizzle. Then dry off the pads and you are done installing the pads and now you can put it onto the flute. That's what the pad looks like after it's been ironed. There should be smooth skin on it. If there are still ripples, you can iron it again. This will be the first video on that process. Look in the description below for links to other videos on how to level, seat, and adjust flute pads. I hope this video has been helpful. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos and also look in the description below for links to the playlist on how to repair flutes.